Sister Glenda, now me, and also Brother Kim Lee, and Sister Mai Mai, and also Brother Samuel, our dear friends, and also you, our dear friends as well. Welcome us to come and visit to Hong Kong. It is our very first time to come to Hong Kong. So we really enjoy, enjoy the fellowship with all of you, enjoy the sceneries, enjoy the food, enjoy the night place to stay, enjoy everything. <laughs> so we would like to say thank you to all of you for really hospitalities and your love and care for us. And also we are blessed to be with all of you. Before I start to share about the message, I would like to uh, share with you about how I come to know the Lord. In 1997, while there, are, there were three Korean missionaries who were sent by the Singaporean church to come to Cambodia, one missionary stayed and ministered in Phnom Penh, while there are two uh, Korean missionaries went to Sihanoukville. It's the eastern part of uh, Cambodia. It's a very nice place too. It has a beautiful beach and islands as well. <laughs> so one of the Korean missionary that I met, I went there in order to study English actually. But finally, I didn't study English. I studied the Bible. <laughs> I never go there in order to become a Christian. I don't want to go there in order to change the religion. But I go there to study English in order to hopefully I got a good job if I I did it well, but God has a higher plan for our lives. So just uh, that time we got to know him and receiving the training for two years in the Kompong Sound Bible School and Sihanoukville. And then we went to, uh, the Lord called us to study in Singapore for three years while I, meet, while I met my dear wife just now, Lee Nam Soon. And then, <laughs> and then we got married in 2002. Until now, actually today is our 16 wedding anniversary <laughs> it's a very special day god has a very right timing for all of us <laughs> actually we don't plan to say but anyway <laughs> the heart <laughs> and the lord bless so much especially we have two children just now daniel and jimaima and we thank the lord to come to all of you now don't make the time to be you know like sharing a lot about ourselves and all that i would like to share a little bit about uh, the ministry in cambodia first actually it's a privilege it's not enough to share all yes this is our church uh, service actually we have a, a worship service for on sunday for two times in the morning and also in the evening in the morning we have a mix between the jews and also with the adults and then in the evening, we have English service. Even I'm not a native speaker, always speak broken English, but I want to do the English ministry. The reason because I want to reach out to the university students that they normally excuse from coming to church on Sunday. They say, oh, I year three or year four at the university, I have to work, you know, work on Monday to Friday and Saturday and Sunday I go to school, go to universities. Likewise, we think that on Sunday evening, at least, they can come and worship and join us. This is a worship service that we have. And this one is a Christmas activity, activity last year. So I put together as a worship service. And then also we have a, please continue. We have a, a leadership training. We have some of the, you know, like the leader in our church, we call a deacon or deaconess or elders. Even they are not really official or whatever, but when they come to know the Lord a little bit longer, we gather together and then we study the Word of God like we join all of you on Wednesday night. Have a Bible study like this. And what the top part is a premarital counseling class. We know that sometimes they just get married and then afterward we feel that have a lot of problem in their, their life, family life. Likewise, we just uh, have this course and when we are not really, you know, uh, very good enough for that, at least we bring materials and then we share our life testimony and some uh, idea from the certain resources with all of them. And then, just, just move on please. Here is a class for evangelism. We also train people to come in order to go out, to reach out to the people. Even it's not really effective. We are living in Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh people nowadays start to be more busy than before. 
So when we meet with them, it's not easy to spend more time, like if we go to the ministry in the outreach area. At least we train them in order to have fellowship and invite friends and then know how to share with all of them. And then not only train in a theory, we go out and evangelize as well. This is one of my pictures that I evangelize to the people, sometimes make fun, so they enjoy laughing, and then we have a good friend and fellowship together. Some of them come to church, some they go to other church, it's no problem. Any church they want to go, it's nearby to their place, it's welcome. And then we have, this is a Sunday ministry, a Sunday school ministry, it is the teachers who gather together, they have a planning what to teach and what to do. Even now we almost run out of material, but I thank you to Pastor Reni. Just uh, passed some Sunday school material to my wife recently. Hopefully it will help for our Sunday school, teacher, uh, Sunday school uh, children as well. Down part is a Sunday school ministry that we have on Sunday, all gathered together. And then the bigger one and the smaller one we divide into two groups. And then down part is uh, one more, please. These are dormitory students, but I think not enough. Some more uh, stay lately, but we don't have the photo. So I just put yesterday, so no more update photos. We have uh, 16 students who come from the province. Provinces, they come from different provinces to, to work or to study, mostly to study in Phnom Penh. They are looking for the place to stay. And if they stay outside, it's not really good for them with the environment, with the, you know, with the friends. Normally they can, you know, uh, maybe involve with certain bad things. But if church provides this place for them, we can let them also hear the good news. Christian or not Christian, we allow them to stay with us. Of course, we have some rule and some regulation. Every morning from, uh, from uh, Tuesday to Saturday, we have morning devotion. So everyone in the dormitory had to get up. And some of them are small. We have four, four stu students are very young, like my children. By the age of 13 or 14, they also have to get up in the morning. Because we are the soldier of Christ. So we have to train, equip, and then come. But actually, it's not easy. Cambodia is very hot in the daytime. Early morning is the best time to sleep. <laughs> Even myself, somehow I have to skip one day off or not, I have to go up or not. Sometimes it's a really spiritual battle, but I actually have to go. So let's continue. It's a village ministries. We have a various ministry actually, and the door is open. Ministry in village are more needed, you know, and more easier than the ministry in the capital cities. You see this, uh, we go to the village and then we just, uh, you know, we invite the people and then we share the good news and sometimes we have the medical. Our church, we have one uh, church member who is a doctor. So we have like a first aid to help the people who are sick with a skin disease, with a stomach pain or whatever, just a simple disease so they can come and through sharing this, also we share the good news to them as well. And these are old people, you know, please continue. The old people and children are gathered together and they, they join us and listen very carefully. In the village, children are more obedient. They are very quiet and listen and, you know, and sometimes when we finish, they say, don't go home yet. Spend time with us. We say, time to go back. We cannot stay more longer. But they say, no. But in the children in the town, they say, it's time to go home. <laughs> Why you speak too much? Yeah, we want to go home. You see the children, I don't know here, but I, I talk about Cambodia. So different. So it's very lovely. And in the village, the photo just now, in, we have uh, excavators and all that. The people there, the waters, they don't have a clean water. So they, they just only use the water from the rain. So they store up this water the whole dry season, but still not enough. So what to do? They did, even they dig the well, also not effective. Because the well have a certain kind of, you know, when you, you drink it, and then you have a certain, you know, your kidney, urine have a problem, you know? So, so we think it's a better way. We have a pond there. They already had a pond. So one day my friend, they donate some fun. So we ask the people there to enlarge bigger. So now the people are very happy. So one of the villagers, one of the vi villagers, he sent his son. He said, God is so good. Jesus is very good. So they do a lot of good things in our place. So please take my son, whatever you want him to be, bring him and then train him 
So this boy now become one of the, you know, like the teenagers or become a youth very soon to join and play music in the local church. We praise the Lord for that. Yes, and then this is also still a certain kind of children ministry, as you see. And also one of the, this one is a Christmas activity. And so we have a kind of Cambodian dancing, you know. It's very look like to Thai and Laos, very similar. So many people gather together and hear the message and we prepare some uh, chicken curry and some bread and we eat together afterward and we receive blessing together. Yes, continue, one more. This is a, we call a church mission trip or we say the retreat, just a one day. You know, uh, some of our church member, sometimes they just only come to church, not enough. We want to build more relationship or fellowship. We bring them to the, you know, like somewhere, have a resort area. But we go sometimes only go there in the morning and evening come back. Also build a good fellowship together with all of them. Now I come to the, the message. The message today is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. You can read on the screen the slides I also have for you. The topic of this sharing is the harvest of souls. Let me read for you the Matthew 9, 35 to 38. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassions on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. As you see some of the pictures in the village ministry or even in the capital ministries, just as share, it's just only one church that we are doing. How about in the whole Cambodia? Cambodia is now is open. The door is open. Just now you share that in India, a lot of persecution. Cambodia, the door is open for all of us. But I don't believe that the door is over open. Someday the door is open, someday the door will close. So what shall we do? So the harvest of soul. The man, uh, the man work of Jesus. Jesus has done in his time, maybe around three main works of him. First of all, Jesus was doing as the herald, proclaiming the good news. The herald is the man who brings the message from the king. Jesus was the one who brought a message from God. The duty of the herald is the proclamations of certainties. Preaching must always be the proclamation of certainties. John 4, 35, don't you have a saying? It's still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. The time is ripe for harvest. The souls are waiting. In Cambodia, if you talk about the death, just only by accidents, accidents just a day as an average, people die four to five people. So when I come here, I ask to our brother Kim Lee and I also see my, whether he have any accident often or not, this is not really my, that much. But Cambodia, you see accident every day. People die, four or five of them. So do you believe that all of them, do you think that all of them already get saved? Some may be yes, some may be not. And the percentage of believers in Cambodia, just not really exactly, some say one point, 7%, some say 2% or 3%, we are not so sure. But anyway, just a very few percentage of Christians in Cambodia. So you see, the Jesus disciples say, four more months, the harvest will be the time of harvest. But Jesus say, no, now is the time, the right time is now. So Jesus do the, did the main work, one of, first of all, is proclaiming the good news. And number two, Jesus was a teacher. It is not enough to proclaim the Christian certainties and let go at that. We must also be able to show the significance of these certainties for life and for living. It is important that the, pro, the problem of this lie in the fact that we teach Christianity, not by talking about it, but by living it. People may not see God. We don't see God, right? We never see God. People can see Christ is in us, 
by our testimony of life, by our love, by our caring, by our you know actions, not just only by what we are talking about Christ. It is not the Christian duty to discuss Christianity with others, so much as it is to show them what Christianity is. Number three, the, the third work that Jesus did, Jesus was a healer. The gospel which Jesus brought did not stop at words. It was translated into deeds. If we read through the gospel, we, we will see that Jesus spends far more time healing the sick and feeding the hungry and comforting the sorrowing than he did merely talking about God. He turned the words of Christian truth into the deeds of Christian love. We are not truly really Christian until our Christian belief issues in Christian action. The priest would have said that religion consists of sacrifice. The scribe would have said that religion consists of law. But Jesus Christ said that religion consists of love. It is quite different, right? So now we come to uh, verse 36. The compassion of Jesus. When Jesus see the crowd, what happened? Verse 30, Matthew 9, 36. When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion to the depths of his being. For they were harassed and helpless like sheep who have no shepherd. When Jesus saw the crowd of ordinary men and women, he was moved with compassion, the word. Here I, I skip and then we, we jump to the, another uh, slide. Compassion of Jesus continue. In the gospel, apart from the Jews, some of the parables of the word compassion is used only of Jesus. You can read this one by yourself, Matthew 9, 36, Matthew 14, 14, 15, 32, and so on. When we study these passages, we are able to see the things which move Jesus most of all. So Jesus is full of compassion. Let's see the pictures of the sheep. Let's move on. Sheep without a shepherd. You see? The sheep are very stupid animal ever. You know, when I was uh, young, young, maybe like my, my son age, our home we have a lot of pets. So cats have a lot of babies. So they live everywhere in the house. Sometimes they go to the rooftop of the house and then they, they poop. So the poop come to the jars of water, yeah, the, the jars of water. And we see all the poop and everything and then we don't know and then we sometimes we boil it and then we just drink, we don't know. But sometimes when we see it, wow, terrible. <laughs> yeah, and then of course I say like that, you know, not really, maybe not your, your culture. But you know, for us, afterward, my, my family decided to throw this cat away. So we put in the, the, the bag at night time, my elder sister and I carry this cat with the, the baby and not really small, they already can eat, can survive actually. And then bring far, far away. But then when we come home, we just arrive home, I heard. <laughs> we heard the sound of the cats. And I asked to my sister, are they cat here? We left some of them or not? I say, I don't think so. We brought them all. <laughs> but when we come home, we see all of them stay at home. They just stay at home, they came earlier than us. I don't know how they come. Because we, we saw behind of us, we never see any cat come. So cat are very clever. So we decided not to throw them away. Take care of them. <laughs> Even dogs. I think dog here also different from our place maybe. Our dog sometimes, I used to make a joke to my church members. Our dog sometimes went to the restaurants before us. We just only across the restaurants, but the dog went to the restaurants. Why? Because Cambodian dog can go to restaurant too. They can because restaurant there is not like here, have a door closed like that, on the street or whatever, you know. The dog come and then the people eat and then they throw bones. They come and eat bones. <laughs> and then they go home, they know where to go there. They are much clever compared to the sheep. But if sheep, if you keep on the roadside, the sheep will wander around, cannot find a way home, right? This is a sheep without a shepherd. Like why God has called 
all of us or many of us to be the minister, to be the shepherd of the flock. What happened to the, 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 the sheep continually? We see another picture. I found it from the go-go. It's very cute, you know. You know what the sheep say? Where is the shepherd? <laughs> He's alone. He's looking for his shepherd. So what happened to the sheep that stay alone? You see another third picture? Wow, sheep without shepherd face a lot of whoops. We come and attack. I don't know here, but in Cambodia, we have a lot of cultic groups come. Like the Ang Sang Hong. Have you heard of that? Ang Sang Hong is a, from Korea, actually. It's a cult group. They bring people astray from the truth. They say Ang Sang Hong is God. God has failed. God who, no, sorry. God who created Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve fell because they disobeyed God by eating the fruit that God has forbidden them. And then he said, Jesus also is the second Adam also fell because he died. And then he said, Ang Sang Hong is the third Adam. So he is truly God. So many people who have us just only starting to know the Lord not really strong like this sheep, they are attacked by these wolves. So sheep without shepherd is have to be, you know, take good care of. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1 to 5, I just stress on verse 5. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. Likewise, when I saw some of you, you know, like have a Bible study and gathering like this, you are protected. Protected by the shepherd by the love for each other and to care and to you know to take good care of each other let's continue he was moved jesus was moved to compassion by the world's pains in this whole world many places people live in pain social injustice in our country we have a lot of social injustice many of them still hunger no, some of them also very difficult, orphans, a lot of orphans. Government never take care of them. We thank God for many Christian NGOs that come, you know, to take care of them. Our government, the poor people, orphans, the villagers, they don't take good care of them at all. The reason why? Because if these people get well educated, government cannot do whatever they want. Likewise, they, they don't care about these people. When election comes, they just give you small gifts, ask you to give election to them. But then when the, they won the election, you are still living in the same condition. Likewise, for, for, for Jesus, he was full of move with compassion with the world pain. He was moved with compassion for the sick, for the blind, and for those who grip of the demons. In all our afflictions, he is afflicted. He could not see a sufferer, but he longed to ease the pain. He came in order to help us to sow the, the pain from us. He was moved to compassion by the world's sorrows. The sight of the widow of Nan, following the body of her son out of burial, moved his heart. Luke 7, 13. He was filled with a great desire to wipe the tear from every eyes. So we have our God who is full of compassion to all of us. He was moved to compassion by the world hunger. The sight of the tired and hungry crowds was a call upon his power. No Christian can be content to have too much while others have too little. We can see that nowadays many people they are thinking of themselves. They never satisfied. You see, the oceans are quite big, but they need more water, never content, never satisfied with the water. The world, the love, get narrower, get smaller and smaller, but Christian must show a different kind of love. He was moved to compassion by the world loneliness, the sight of the leper banished from the society of his fellow men, living a life which was a living death of loneliness and universal abandonment, called forth his pity and his power. 
Mark 1, 41. He was moved to compassion by the word bewilderment. Bewilderment is a feeling of being extremely confused. The Jewish leaders who should have been given man's strength to live were bewildering men with subtle arguments about the law, which had no help and comfort in them. When they should have been helping men to stand upright, they were bowing them down under the intolerable weights of the scribal laws. They were offering men a religion which was a handicap instead of a support. We must always remember that Christianity exists not to discourage, but to encourage. Amen? Amen. To the wet men down with burdens, but to lift them up with wings. In Matthew 9, 37 to 38, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray for the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for the harvest. He is one of the most characteristic things Jesus ever said when he and his religious leaders of his day looked on the crowds of ordinary men and women. They saw them in quite different ways. The Pharisees saw the common people as chaff to be destroyed and burned up. Jesus saw them as a harvest to be reaped or harvest or to be saved. The Pharisees in their pride looked for the destruction of sinners. Jesus in love died for the salvation of sinners. That harvest will never be harvested or reaped unless there are harvesters to harvest it. It is one of the blessing truths of Christian faith and life that Jesus Christ needs man. When he was upon the earth, his voice could reach so few. He was never outside Palestine. And there was a world which was, which was waiting. He's, he still wants men to, to hear the good news of the gospel. But they will never hear unless other men will tell them, Will you go if God call you? He wants all men to hear the good news. But they never, they will never hear it unless there are those who are prepared to cross the seas and mountains and bring the good news to them. Nor is prayer enough. A man might say, I will pray for the coming of Christ's kingdom every day in life. But in this, as in so many things, prayer without works is dead. James chapter 2 also say about this. It is a dream of Christ that every man should be a minister and a harvester. Most of us want to support to missions by prayer and sending finance support. It is a good thing, yet the mission fields also need your dedication to go and serve as well. You know, as you remember in the Great Commissions that recorded in the, the two Gospels, Matthew 28, 18 and 20, as you know, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples to, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the every ends of the age. So the Lord Jesus said to his disciples that go and make disciples. Jesus never said, you stand here. No, you just go, go out. The harvest is already plentiful. They need all of you to come everywhere in the whole world. And one more, Mark 16, 15. He said to them, go into all the worlds and preach the gospel to all creation. Just now I see the, the reports from the Philippines. I see all of you has done, have done a very great job. But still yet, there are many parts of the world need the good news as well. Conclusion today. As Jesus come to this earth, he, do, he does to do many things. But three main things he does to proclaim the good news. I believe that all of you are also doing, proclaiming the good news, teaching the word, and healing the sick. Jesus was ministering to the people around Palestine, just only in the city of Palestine. 
not the whole world yet. So the work not yet been done. The whole world still in need of more harvesters, full time and part time servants for the kingdom. Let me conclude with the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 8. I believe that is family verse for all of us. Let us read it together. And then we ask our, ourselves that if God speaks to us in this manner, what is our response to this verse? Let us read together. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. This question will talk to individual, to all of us individually. Please ask yourself, if God is speaking to you now, what is your response? You might say maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, maybe a few years later. But if God is speaking to you right now, the harvest four months later, but Jesus said the harvest already now, not four months later. Let us pray together. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. Especially you have given me a chance, a wonderful time to meet with my dear friends here. That they really love you. They really serve you. They really want to do whatever you want them to do. We thank you for these hearts. And we want to pray that you continue to bless each one of the Lighthouse members that they can continue to live a life not only to just only to live here at the comfort zones but they have also heart for the mission not just only to support and pray but they themselves will respond to the message of God that if God who called us who will go for him but can we say like Isaiah say, here am I, send me Lord. O oh Lord, please bless all of us. And we thank you for everything. We commit all of this in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you all.